The classical platonic question of forms is one that responds to our common predicament. We are faced with appearances, forms indeed, that are opaque to our understanding. We have therefore the distinction between appearances and reality. We live in a world of appearances that are masks of what is behind them. And naturally, we seek to look what is at what is behind things, and we ask questions. We ask, where from? Why? Now, this problem is given full justice by Plato when he distinguishes the hidden form of things from the outer form of things. So things have a morphe, an outer semblance, and they have an inner form, what will be called um, idea or eidos, so it's an idea form that is intelligible. What is the difference between an intelligible or so-called platonic idea or form and an ordinary sensory form? Well, in the case of sensory forms, so we have objects that are tangible, yeah? they have uh, a, a semblance. Well, the semblance has us or prompts us to speak about it. It occasions our discourse. It occasions our addressing it, trying to figure out what it means. And so in this case, we have a scenario where we have appearances, so things in terms of appearances, and words, which are outside of the things. So in our common experience, we have a world made of things and words. Things being so-called particulars and words being so-called universals. And then we try to account for this disparity between things or appearances, really, or outer forms, and, well, words that are intangible, the intangible and the tangible. How do these, th these two things come together? And Plato's ideas respond to this predicament. But the ideas are themselves problems. So let us see what the uh, discrepancy is here between those sensory ideas or forms and the platonic forms, the hidden forms. These forms are not uh, things that leave discourse or universals outside of themselves. So that we could say that we speak about things and that our discourse is somehow independent, if not even autonomous of the things. They, it can be alienated, even alienating from the things. In the case of platonic ideas or forms, discourse takes place within the forms. So uh, sometimes Plato speaks of the ideas as the things themselves. The thing itself, the table itself, um, you know, justice itself, man itself, Socrates himself, we could say, um, all of these things in themselves contain the universal. They are particular or particulars that contain the universals. How does that work? They are forms of intelligibility. They are not forms that leave us outside, but they are forms of discourse. This is unusual for us uh, common people. Uh, it is unusual, and yet it is very close to us. For 
it is a common thing for us to encounter things that are external to us and then gradually, gradually to come to enter into them in the respect that we appreciate what they signify to us, what they signify in themselves. We begin to appreciate them as, well, something that transcends sheer appearances. But um, we begin to care for things, and we care for things in the respect that we see what is inherently worthy of them, which is to say what is really alive. Consider children who play with toys. They see an object, but it's alive for them, and that's why they play with it. Um, they, they begin to care for things, but they begin to, in other words, see signs of life, of spirit. Pneuma in Greek, is spiritus, is, is life, the breath of life. Now, of course, we are also used to distinguishing inanimate things from animate things, or even people, animals, but people, uh, more importantly, who who manifest, who or at, at any rate we recognize as, as having life. So we, of course, care mostly for what is, or what we recognize as being alive. It's much easier to see that Socrates is alive than to see that a stone is alive, or to see life in Socrates rather than in a stone, or a living, what we call a living body rather than a corpse. So when we have this experience of um, life, we do not see the living being, uh, most importantly, the human being, as a mere uh, physical appearance. Yeah? I mean, when we do, uh, th that is a sign of our corruption. Um, we are being vulgar uh, when we consider the human being as a mere physical appearance that's um, that's anti-human that that's um, almost uh, well it's a way of of denigrating a person yeah? when, when we consider that person when we speak about that person as a mere physical appearance so we appreciate the inner value well this is already to appreciate the uh, the, that person, or that, yeah, as as in a platonic idea, not uh, only as a physical idea, but as a platonic idea, in which discourse um, thrives, in which there is understanding, uh, there is meaning there. It is not only that we talk about the human being. Uh, I meet my friend, and I speak about his physical appearance, I speak within him. I speak with him. I enter into dialogue, and um, I seek to understand the human being. And this is to say that I enter into that human being um, as a form that is meaningful, that contains meaning. But now, when it contains meaning, that, that is to say that there is a reason within it, and I appreciate that reason. But of course, I have to let go of my own physicality to appreciate that, my own sense of certainty to appreciate the meaning of that human being, right? the value of what we could call of that human being and to understand that human being. So the Platonic idea, far from being a, um, well, uh, what it has often been portrayed as, as some kind of a, um, an illusion, a pie in the sky, it is really um, 
the true form uh, of all things uh, insofar as we begin to understand those things. So we cannot understand a physical form as such, but as we try to understand the physical form, we find out that the physical form is merely a shadow of the true form. In other words, there's only one form. Um, there is, however, a, a crude way of approaching that form, that real true form, and, and then there is a better way to understand that form. I mean, I can understand, um, um, or rather not understand, I can approach the uh, appearance or the, the form of someone and from outside in a mechanistic way. And then I can gradually appreciate that um, the, that uh, which I consider to be a, a, a dead form is really alive. The human being is truly alive. But, but then in what way is he alive? Is, he, is the body alive? Is, we, we then to draw a distinction between these things. You know, the, we leave the earlier sense of the form behind and we call it a physical form, the body, and then we start appreciating the form. Uh, it's the same form, but we begin to appreciate it more and, understand, and, and begin to understand it and, or to see it as meaningful as we forsake our own physical form. And then, in fact, it may turn out that this question of we is lost as well, and that the old self is now uh, none other than, well, the, the very life of the form that is intelligible, that, that is understood. Then the question of intelligibility comes up. It is not really that someone understands something else, but but that there is a coincidence of a thing in the mind, as the medievals would put it. Um, true understanding is not um, a power of a self with respect to a thing, but it is rather the, the letting go of an external person who understands um, and... In fact, the, the, this person somewhat dissipates and the, the coming to light um, of, of something that is at the heart of all things. So true understanding or real understanding or any kind of understanding uh, in, is not the property in this case of um, a self, but it is that which underlies the self. It is the ground of the self. So, well, um, when we have then so-called platonic ideas, what we really have is is um, uh, the only ideas that there are. In other words, uh, the the forms, the real forms of things that are meaningful, that are therefore intelligible or that shine forth, that are alive. All things are really alive. But, again, platonically speaking, um, life determines itself, and um, it, um, we could say, it freezes itself into... Um, some kind of oblivion. And this oblivion uh, is very often uh, well represented by what we call us ourselves. We represent that oblivion. And then we are uh, lost in it. And, uh, and uh, in this oblivion, we attribute to ourselves uh, the thought and uh, the understanding that is uh, 
something that really precedes our own determination. We would then be determinations of thought. And um, we would be lost in a world of appearances that are opaque to the understanding, alienated from things. Uh, hence the, the, the setup, the predicament, right? The, of, of the split between things and words, particulars and universals. But in Platonic terms, to speak colloquially here, Platonic, um, we are merely masks of um, a world that is eminently alive, in which uh, forms are forms of understanding. They're alive. And um, it is quite um, unfortunate that um, in uh, the modern context, the modern world, um, we have um, given up on that platonic notion of an original life, of things as being originally meaningful, and we have opted for a world in which um, meaning is necessarily constructed, in which we try to create uh, life. So the determination of life um, tries to establish life on its own basis. The mask of life, we could say, um, tries to establish itself as the foundation for a new life, a virtual life, which is supposed to uh, solve um, the the problem of our determination. Um, and again, the Platonic answer, the classical rather answer to this problem of determination, we're stuck, um, involves letting go, um, letting go of ourselves. And um, this through uh, a, a logos, a discourse um, that uh, carries us, um, well, to our death. Uh, in Socratic terms, philosophy is preparation for death, which is to say that the self is dying. The mask falls off, and the understanding that underlies the self, the original understanding, which belongs to, well, again in Platonic terms, the form of things, the true form of things, the real form of things, ultimately, um, or things themselves, belongs to things themselves. The life of things manifests itself, shines forth. And um, again, this is not a question of understanding things as something other than the understanding or of the uh, purviewer. It is a matter of... Um, Life itself shining forth. 